kicks in the gear hard. I like that. This is Colby with Garcia Moto. So today I'm going to take you on a ride, actually a comparison between a question we've gotten a lot, which is what is the difference between an S1000XR and a GS1250 or 1250 Adventure as well? So great question. A lot. Let's get it going. All right, guys. Well, as I ride over to Garcia for the day to pick up a GS, just wanted to go over some brief things with you. You know, the S1000 XR and the GS1250 might look similar, but they are <laughs> about as alike as a lion and a bear. Um, both good in their respective ways, but completely different animals. Um, I'm going to talk about the XR first, and when I get on the GS, I'm going to kind of go through the differences that I feel from a consumer perspective. Um, and then this is my personal XR, just FYI. Okay, so the first thing, you know, just looking down at this dash, it's going to look a whole lot similar to a S1000R and an S1000RR. Glad you asked. It is pretty much the same engine, just tuned differently, okay? So this revs up to 13K. Double R revs a little bit higher. R is about the same, the same thing as the XR. So you got four modes. You've got dynamic pro mode, dynamic mode, normal mode, and a rain mode. So, actually road mode is the other one. So you do this by using this button over here, mode, and you can see it changing up here, rain, road, dynamic, dynamic pro. Now when you change the mode, one thing to know is that it changes a lot of things, okay? Your suspension changes. Um, wheelie control in some cases goes off. Your exhaust opens up. The throttle response gets a little bit tighter okay so for me personally it feels good and dynamic or dynamic pro just because I like it the way that it sounds it's kind of like if you compare this to a standard BMW if you've ever been in a, or in a car with like a sport mode it's like the difference between being in comfort mode and sport or sport plus mode okay so cars I mean the, the motorcycle is gonna sound a little bit louder and it's gonna fire back up. The exhaust fires back a little bit once you get into dynamic. In the normal and rain mode, it does not, okay? I'm just revving to get this person to go. Gave me a look. <laughs> um, yeah, so dynamic pro mode, the suspension hardens up and the throttle response is a lot better in my opinion. Um, in rain mode, obviously the throttle response has a lot of leeway because it doesn't want you to, to get out of control. The suspension's also different. ABS is also very heightened in rain mode and road mode compared to the dynamic mode. Um, there's been instances where it, um, it's not completely gone in dynamic pro, but you can spin tires very easily in dynamic pro whereas you have a lot of traction control in the other modes which is a good thing for a lot of people okay so who is this bike for <laughs> i would say just from a personal perspective this is for a guy that wants a super bike but also wants to be able to take it on a trip this bike can rip your arms straight out of your body. I'm not kidding. It will go. Some people have said that it can go 
upwards of 170 plus. Will not say that I've done that or not, maybe, <laughs> but this bike can haul and it is it is just a down-tuned version of a double R engine. 165, 170 horsepower stock, okay? Other BMW bikes, you know, are sitting around the 110 to 120 horsepower, even with the big bikes that weigh even more than this. Now, this is not a light bike. You know, you're talking about 500, mid 500 pound wet. So this thing is going to be hard for me to get off the ground if it falls. You know, it's not a, it's not a super sport that I can just completely just pick off the ground pretty easily. But in the grand scheme of things, this bike was for me because I didn't want to get a travel bike and a track bike because this bike can be taken to the track because <laughs> I'll give you an instance right here. So I'm at 6K, this thing just launches off. It just absolutely goes, okay? I didn't even hit 10K, I don't think. sounds massive so the other thing about this is I throw up this windshield it makes a huge difference on the highway okay you're not gonna get that going long distance I'm almost completely upright and I'm very comfortable okay I've got heated grips on the right that's a I think that's an option when it comes to the XR also I have the navigation package which happened to come on this but this can fit a BMW NAV 5, or I think they have a NAV 6 now. It's a GPS and also integrates into your bike. It gives you statistics and other things. Most GSs come with that as well. Um, usually how I roll, I just have this holder right here. It just plops my phone in. I charge my phone through a, uh, through a plug down there to speed a plug up. So. But otherwise, this thing is awesome. You can actually adjust ABS in each mode as well from over here. So I have about, you know, borderline 3,000 miles on this bike. I bought it this past summer. Um, so I feel like I'm pretty seasoned on a bike like this to, to be able to say how I feel about it. And then I've actually never been on a 1250 GS, but I know, <laughs> It's not a four-cylinder engine. It's going to feel a lot different, okay? This thing revs super high. And we've had a lot of people coming to the dealership saying, hey, I can't really decide between a GS or an XR. Well, do you want a, do you want a rocket ship that's comfortable? Or do you want an adventure bike that you can go from California to North Carolina and back? have a little bit more on the tank not that I couldn't do that on this but if I'm on the highway for eight plus hours a day revving it let's see if I'm at 70 miles per hour on this bike I'm at about 6k rpm which I'm buzzing pretty hard in the handlebars here and that's fine, but it might get annoying in your ear after eight hours, okay? But, yeah, so that's how I would describe this bike. I mean, it's been an incredible upgrade for me. I came off of a 500cc Honda, which was a humongous jump, let me tell you, but it was a good decision because I can handle this bike. It's not so crazy that I mean there's safety features that just make this thing great like the wheelie control okay so if I lay on the throttle in dynamic pro mode my front wheel is coming up faster than anything you've ever seen I mean the, the front wheel will come up with this thing in second gear and possibly even third gear without even popping the clutch if you lay on it um, even I've had instances where I'm I'm laying into it and this thing has a quick shifter as well which is awesome because downshifting it's rev matching so i'll show you right now so no hands on the bar 
downshifting. You can hear that sound in Dynamic Pro. It sounds awesome too. Backfiring a little bit. Um, but yeah, I barely have to pull the clutch in usually, which is an awesome thing because the bike shifts a whole lot better than you could. Um, so, I mean, this thing can do can do it all, in my opinion. It's, it's kind of a one-stop bike for people that want the adrenaline rush, but also don't want to be hunched over. Like, I'm 26, I'm pretty young, but also I have a bad back. I have herniated discs in L4 and L5, so I can't just lay down on a, on a sport bike all day long, or I would only last an hour or two, maybe. I've been, I've ridden this thing six plus hours and it's been great. So, I mean, this bike came out a few years ago, I believe, and it's honestly a huge thing because <laughs> in the past you'd have to choose from comfort or speed, whereas this bike gives you an awesome combination of both. So I just wanted to go over kind of the basics Outside of that, um, a couple of mods I've done, I put an Acra exhaust on this that comes on the double R and the R usually. Um, mostly just for looks, it doesn't sound much different. I mean, this bike is really loud to begin with. Um, I changed the windscreen out to a more tinted look, which adds to just aesthetic. This funnels the air a little bit over my helmet as well. Um, and then change to an adjustable brake lever and clutch um, aftermarket. That's the only th other thing besides, I think I have an oil um, a protector in the front, uh, radiator, sorry, that screws into the front just to make sure the rocks don't nick the front. But other than that, that's it. Um, I thought about putting crash bars on this thing, but um, I don't know. I have them, but it might not happen. But that's pretty much all I would need. Like, it's it, you don't need to do anything to this bike, in my opinion. It was just personal preference. I like customizing things that I have, um, and it's relatively inexpensive, minus the exhaust. I think it's because it's carbon fiber. But anyway, so that is probably it from this bike. Hope you got some information. Maybe you needed. Um, Come on by the dealership and, and give one a try if they have one. If they don't, just tell them you need some. <laughs> They'll get some in for you. I know they can find these pretty easily. Even if they don't have one, these sell out pretty quickly. Um, they also come in a low seat and suspension variation. This is a pretty tall bike. Um, even I'm six foot and I can't flat foot. So someone who's like 5'8 might struggle on a regular XR. So that, that could be a variable for you. I mean, the low seat and the suspension lowers it quite a bit. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this bike, I think. I have uh, the 2018 model. I know the only thing that changed with the 19 is the paint schemes. There's a black one that I saw last week. But other than that, here we are, Garcia Moto. Looks like they got some bikes in. I'm gonna go grab a GS. As I get my helmet going, this is the R1250 GS. This is a standard one. This isn't an adventure. So I thought it would be good direct comparison to my XR over there. I'll have some side-by-side -side shots as well. Um, one thing to note right off the bat, which is pretty cool with this bike, is it has a keyless start. And ready. That's pretty cool. Um, other than that, let's get it going. Gotta get some gas first. Okay, so getting off my XR onto this instantly. Okay, a little bit smoother. Definitely not as yippy. Um, boxer engine, a little throatier. And just overall, the seat is a little bit more comfortable than my bike. Um, 
Now that's what this bike is made for to haul long distance, but we'll have to see uh, how it handles. Be back in a little bit once I get gas. All right, so I've put more than enough miles on this so far to really give you a feel of how this compares to an XR. And what do you ask, what's the main differences? This thing is the smoothest bike from the engine down to the seat that I have ever felt. And has power like I did not expect. Has a quick shifter, just like the XR. Everything on the menu, or on the steering wheel controls are the same, okay? The only difference, you know, you still have cruise control on this bike as well. Um, riding modes, the only thing the difference is this has an enduro mode that still has rain mode and uh, road mode and dynamic mode, which, you know, dynamic mode hards up the suspension, makes the throttle a little bit more respons responsive. But man, I am, I am thoroughly impressed. And I, I came into this blind. I just got to Garcia and I thought it would be good to compare it because I was talking to a, a gentleman right before I got on this bike earlier and he was saying, I want a GS. And I, he came out and looked at my XR. He said, what's the difference? And I said, wow, it's, you sit kind of the same, but everything else is different. You know, you're a four cylinder versus this is a boxer engine. As you can see, this is going to rev a lot lower at highway speeds, okay? You have much less <laughs> buzzing going on in the handlebars. Just because at 60, 65 miles per hour, I'm at 4K instead of 6 to 6.5K on an XR. Now, that's not a bad thing, but this thing revs to 10 and an XR revs to 13 and it's a completely different engine. This thing feels like that I could just hang at a specific speed for just hours without even using cruise control. XR, if you're at 35 miles per hour and if you're in dynamic mode, it's just yelling at you to say, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Just launch me off, launch me off. <laughs> so, which I love. I mean, honestly, I was looking for a sport bike that was comfortable. And the XR is literally the perfect bike for me because it's two bikes in one. You can tame it down, but at the same time, it can hang with any race bike probably on the road. I mean, it is a powerhouse. So this thing just going into turns, it feels fantastic. Here's a quick shift, feels good. You can feel this engine sputtering too. I don't know if you can hear that, but <laughs> sounds pretty awesome. So I'm gonna hit these windies right down here, downshift. Oh, this feels good. Awesome. Hit the edge of this. Whoa, whoa, where did that come from? Well, I was uh, being very uh, conservative there. Just hope you saw that this bike does not lack get up and go. Now, I was looking at this bike, and you might look at it in the shop and go, wow, this thing can't even compare. I'm telling you what, this thing will, it's not going to rip your arms off like an S1000, but this is a fun bike for something that you can sit on for 10 hours. So, what stands out to me about this? You got an awesome screen. You've got awesome technology. This thing is ready to roll. I mean, bone stock. As soon as you break this thing in, gosh, I mean, I could be on this bike all day long. And I wouldn't be sore getting off of my XR, but the seat is just, it just feels more comfortable to me. 
And yes, right now in my life, I would still choose an XR over this bike just because of the mere reason that I like having a bike that's almost like two bikes, okay? But I could very well see myself owning one of these in the future. I mean, look at this in the menu right here. So you've got all of this information. You've got tire pressure. You've got how much voltage is coming off the battery. You've got how many miles. You've got the oil, whether it's okay, whether it's low. Um, temperature of the engine right there. It's pretty much giving you an update and diagnostic on the whole bike right there in front of you. I mean, you're not going to be surprised if something happens wrong to this bike. It's probably going to flash 10 colors and tell you change this. But um, another thing, this is ready for a Nav 5 and a, or a Nav 6, just like my XR. Um, controller right here on the left. You can mess with suspension and ABS. You can do auto or dynamic. Turn ABS on and off right there, which is cool. Uh, heated grips. Regardless, from the handlebars up, it is the same bike. And gosh, just being high, uh, high in the gearbox and cruising is just super comfortable. I mean, like I said, I'm thoroughly impressed and I didn't know what to expect. This is a completely blind ride through. Um, suspension feels great. I know why this is the craze of the BMW lineup now, that's for sure. Um, throttle response is definitely smoother. I mean, I'm in dynamic mode and it is not, it is as smooth as can be. I love the boxer engine in this. It really stands out. Well guys, I'm gonna head on back. I'm gonna get some shots of these bikes next to each other. If you have any other questions, reach out to Garcia on Facebook. Um, I'll be more than happy to help you get into your next bike. But man, a GS or an XR is an awesome choice.